All right, so let me go back to what I was speaking about. Um, the Holy Spirit's only purpose. I highlight the word only. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's only purpose for the world is the healing of our mind. I paused after I said that sentence so that we could really listen within. The Holy Spirit's only purpose for the world is the healing of our mind. So when we are guided to do whatever we are guided to do in this world, whether it's to start a foundation, to plan a conference, to join in relationship with another person, to change jobs, um, it doesn't matter what it is. It still only has one purpose, the healing of our mind. So what Holy Spirit is telling me in this message is that that's the purpose of the foundation for the Holy Spirit, the healing of the mind. And Holy Spirit is saying, of course, through the operation of this foundation, circumstances will arise that will seem to bring the unhealed areas of your mind into awareness for healing. And you know, there have definitely been some. Um, I, I don't know if I could sit here and recall them all, but a couple are coming to my mind now, and I'm kind of giggling. Um, one had to do with, you know, uh, being a part of the foundation. This, of course, is, uh, it seems to be, this is how I came to be invited to speak in different places. I work for the foundation when I go to speak. Um, and one thing that happened to me in this process of going to conferences and speaking is I began to get sick at conferences. Um, this started, the first one, uh, first time I got sick was actually in Beaumont, Texas, about two and a half years ago, I think it was. It's hard to keep track of time. Yeah, I think it was about two and a half years ago. Maybe a year and a half, I don't know. <laughs> Probably a year and a half. But um, I, I got sick. I was able to teach. Um, and I really didn't feel that sick when I was teaching. In fact, I don't recall feeling sick at all while I was teaching. Although if you look at the videos, I think I look sick in the videos. <laughs> but it seems like while I was teaching, I was fine. But as soon as there was a break, um, you know, while we were on break, I could feel that I was sick. And then I went to the very first Be the Love, Be the Love in Virginia, the very first one, um, Be the Love 08. And I was sick at Be the Love. And although most people didn't notice, um, there were people who noticed. I actually felt felt pretty bad, again, the entire time I was there, except for when I was teaching. Whenever I was teaching, um, it would disappear completely. And then I went to Wimberley, Texas after that. And I got very sick in Wimberley, in fact, so sick um, that I really felt I could not get out of bed and go teach. I, I really felt terrible. Um, fortunately, I was with Laurent at the time, and so I just asked Laurent to teach for me, and it worked out fine. Um, he took. We were supposed to teach together in both the morning and the afternoon. He took the morning, and by afternoon I was somewhat better. <laughs> I was able to stand up and walk. And then again, as I started teaching, the sickness went away. I don't think I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, but I was at least able to walk up to the area where I was teaching, and then and then the sickness went away once the teaching began. And then in San Francisco last year, uh, Dove and I taught on Friday night, but on Saturday morning I woke up and I was terribly ill and what is interesting is that each time that I got sick I seemed to be sicker than the time before it was getting gradually worse uh, in San Francisco I was oh you should have seen me <laughs> oh <laughs> I I think I was sick enough that I would have been okay if I had died <laughs> some of you guys might know what that feels like just oh but um on the fourth time getting sick at a conference, I finally got smart enough. Sometimes we're not so smart on this path. <laughs> I finally got smart enough to ask Holy Spirit. Wow. After four times, I finally got smart enough to ask Holy Spirit why I was getting sick. And I got an answer immediately. Immediately. It came, you know, it was one of those answers that didn't come with words. It just was plopped into my mind. You know, just the knowledge was plopped there. But what I saw was that um, when I'm at conferences, um, a lot of people are very happy to see me. A lot of people come up to me, hugging me, um, telling me how much they appreciate the teaching, how much they appreciate NTI, um, you know, the CDs, um, 
And what was happening for me, what was going on in my mind so fast that until Holy Spirit showed it to me, I didn't see it. What was happening in my mind is that when people that I had not yet met, people, um, you know, like Lisa Hansen, for example, is in the room. Lisa Hansen is someone I, I know well. So if Lisa Hansen was to come up and, and hug me, I was fine. But if someone else that I had never met before came up and, oh, Regina, and, and they know my whole life story because they've listened to all of the audios and <laughs> they've read in the eye and they know me so well and I never met them, something in my mind was pushing that away. It's kind of like I, I had the world divided into friends and strangers. And when the strangers came up loving me just like the friends did, I mean, they didn't see me as a stranger, right? When they came up loving me, like a dear, dear friend, something in my mind pushed that away. Pushed that away. And again, it was happening so fast I wasn't even seeing it. But what happens at conferences is this happens over and over and over and over again. And each time I pushed it away, it was like I was hitting myself in the head with a hammer. And so what eventually happened is I was getting sick. And then as I was not looking at this, as I was continuing to deny it, and, and, and again, the denial doesn't appear to be conscious, but it is. But it doesn't appear to be conscious because you do it so fast you don't even see it. So as I was continuing to deny this pushing away more and more and more, I just got sicker and sicker and sicker. But when Holy Spirit showed it to me, it really was um, wonderful. It was really a wonderful, wonderful opportunity because when Holy Spirit showed it to me, I saw it. In other words, although I wasn't aware that this was going on in my mind, once it was shown to me, I could see that it was. It was no longer blind to me. And in fact, I did get a little better. By the end of Saturday in San Francisco, I was able to go downstairs. And as soon as I showed up downstairs, that started happening. Uh, people that I didn't know came up to me, very enthusiastic to see me, knowing my whole life story, knowing about Ron and Laurent and every little detail of my life. <laughs> and telling me how it was helpful to them and all of that. And I would see it in my mind. I would see my mind wanting to push them away. But now, since Holy Spirit had helped me to see it, I had the opportunity to choose again. So I would see my mind wanting to push the person away, wanting to label the person as stranger. And then I would very quickly within myself say, no, this is not what I want. I want to welcome this person. And I could feel the um, the walls that were trying to build within me fall, and I would welcome the person. And at first, that was kind of a conscious practice when a seeming stranger walked up to me enthusiastically. I would see the desire to push away, then the realization that is not what I wanted, and the choice to welcome this person as my friend. Um, It only took a bit of practice at that conference and at the next conference. And after that, welcoming everybody as my friend became my natural reaction. Those walls no longer went up. But that's just one example, one tiny example. I'm not going to talk all night about stuff like that. All all the the stories are similar but different. (laughs) 